Hello, happy Wednesday. Welcome to Stamping A to Z. I'm Linda Gibbs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Canada. Um, this is the first episode of 2023. I took a little break over Christmas, spent some time with the family, and now we're back. Back at it, back to crafting, my happy place. Not that family's totally my happy place too, but um, this is up there too. Um, so yeah, so today, before the holidays, I did, um, an episode on making your dyes go further. And I just realized, sorry, I forgot to check the volume. Let's make sure we've got enough volume here. Um, so yeah, so I did some examples on how to make your dyes, like using your dyes in a different way, making them go a little further than just using them as dies. Today we're going to do part two um, and do a few more things with your dies that you might not have thought to use them for in the non-traditional kind of way, which is kind of the name of the game of my Stamping A to Z series. Um, I do try to teach how to use actual products from Stampin' Up! but I also try to teach new techniques and new ways of using your products um, to make them go even further or to just create new things you might not have thought possible with the stuff that you have. We do, today is the last day for you to get your hands on stuff from our um, July to December mini catalog, which has some great stuff discounted. Um, it ends today. Tomorrow is the release of our January to June catalog. Um, it is awesome. You're going to see three of the sets today um, that are in the catalog. I still can't show you the inside of the catalog. This is the outside. Um, I will be able to show you next week. Um, if you want to get your hands on a catalog, you can always let me know if you're in Canada. Um, yeah, but other than that, if there are still stuff on your list from the Christmas winter catalog, make sure you um, get them in today. Other than that, let's get started and start playing with things. All right, on to the awkward transit. Oh, <laughs> just stick my hand right in the camera there. Okay. Let's flip this around and I used my um, my holder during Christmas I don't know if any of you have do videos or have holders um, I use it for playing card we play marbles so it holds my camera over the game board Let's see here. Let's not have the echo of this. Just want to see if you are watching. Please say hi. My it doesn't always tell me who's watching or if anyone's watching. Um, let me know where you're watching from. If you're watching the replay, you can always comment. I do look back. I also post um, my videos onto YouTube afterwards. So if you've got friends or you prefer to rewatch. On YouTube, if you have to, you can't make the whole thing, whatever, um, you can always find it there as well. If you want to share with your friends, I would greatly appreciate that as well. Okay, so January host code is here. Um, let's start with our first project. So the first thing, let me pull it out here. So I've got this Greatest Journey. It's a suite that's in the new catalog. I absolutely fell in love with this because I have three boys and they are very active. And so running, hiking, biking, whatever, mountains, my love of the mountains, I had to have it. But this is one of those sets where the dyes don't necessarily match with the stamps. Like there's some stamps where each die cuts out each one of the images. This one has, it cuts out the floral image and it cuts out the trees. 
But what if you want a biker? What if you want and you want to stamp these things? So today we're going to create a stamp out of our die cuts um, very easily and quickly and not and I will show you what else you can do with that. Also, so I have some just basic craft foam here. I got it on Amazon. You can get it at Michael's. You can pretty much get it anywhere and very inexpensively. And then what I did was I took the die and it cuts very well um, through the foam. I will show you just so in case you don't believe me. <laughs> You never know. Um, now, so I did learn the hard way, and this is where I always like to let you know things that I do where I realize you might not want to. Um, my plate is super used and dinged. So if I'm going to put my foam on here and cut him straight out against this, this back side of my foam is going to be all marked and jagged. I don't really want that. I want to keep it smooth. So options is to use a clean plate or to take a piece of paper um, and just put it underneath so that um, it stays as smooth as possible. Um, another option, which I will show you because I'm going to use the, the stamp that I already made but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to cut through this. I don't want to roll through all of my foam because it kind of compresses it so the less you compress it probably the better. Um, okay so it's cut out all the way to the um, paper but that's okay because we just wanted to keep now you can I don't know if you, you can see this it still is kind of bubbly so Again, I think, well, yeah, you can see it on the paper too. It's because of the plate. So if you really want a smooth cut, so you have a smooth stamp, use a cleaner plate than my super duper old one. Um, I just didn't take one out before this. And I hadn't thought of it until I went to stamp and it was not stamping well. So um, I cut it out like so, and then I poked out all the little holies. And I've got two here. And the reason being is if I stamp one this way, and then if you glue the other side down, you can turn it over and stamp the other way. And then you have the reversed um, stamp image. So that's a great, um, hello Yolande. Welcome, happy 2023. Um, yeah, so if you want to get, like, say you wanted the bikers looking at each other, of course, they might look like they're crashing, but another image or whatever, um, you can totally have, have the reverse images. So here you can see, I even had, like, I must have had something on my plate when I rolled it, and it made, like, a big divot in my guy. So when I was stamping him, which I will show you, um, he makes a big but because I was stamping in black now this the black isn't as squishy as our other ink pads so you have to make sure you ink it up really well and then you want to you might want to use the matte um, just because the foam is so thin, it gives you more pressure. But here you can see all my little holes and divots, but the big hole is there. So since I was using black, if I can find it, I took my blend, and this is the light basic black blend, and I just fixed him right up, and you would never know that it wasn't a solid image of the biker. So that is another option for you. 
if you don't have it fully smooth. Um, that's how I fixed my, my oopsies instead of redoing it because I used, so I was stamping him on this beautiful paper, which is part of the suite. So it is the Enjoy the Journey Designer Series paper. And it has like these, so on one side it's got the green and blues, and then on the other side it had more of the pinks and oranges, but it's got all sorts of scenes. And then there's like prints on the other side. So great for scrapbooking, um, great to make all sorts of fun projects with. So anyways, I just, I stamped the three. And so while you're stamping, don't forget that you also have, uh, I thought I had some out. Mm, hold on a minute, but I use, oh, no. Mm, it must be with, is it with the card? No. Huh. Um, don't forget about the masking paper that we have or post-it notes work also. Um, it's just, this is, it's really thin, but it does the job. So all I did again was I cut out my, my die and then I used him as I went along to stamp to mask him. So let me just, I thought I had one already cut, but let me just, I've, I started cleaning my craft room, but it's not finished. And you know how when you clean sometimes, it's almost like disorganized, even though it's organized, especially when it's half done. Or I new places for things and then you don't remember where they are. Oh, yeah, you've totally done this for the jelly plate. So now you can use all those ones you've made for your jelly plate and just use them as stamps. Or use them as stamps on your jelly plate like you have been doing. So you're way ahead of me. This is not new to you. Hopefully one of my projects will be new <laughs> to you. Um, so yeah, I won't do it on here, but I'll just, I'll cover this so you can see. With the paper, it's super easy. It's a really light paper. You just peel it off, stick it on. I'm not worried about where it's positioned in the back because um, I'm not gonna be hitting the back. But then you would just go back in. And I just realized I forgot to you how I stuck this to my block. So to stick it to the block, all I did, where did my little foamy dude go? I just took some adhesive, roll it on, Ooh. and of course all the pieces are still in here, and then I just stuck it to my block. Or you can use the Stamparatus. My other two projects are using the Stamparatus, so I kind of ran out of plates. <laughs> so. Um, this one went on a block. That's okay. So then you would, if you wanted a third one, you would go again. And here I'm just kind of covering the wheel so it has a cool effect. But that's how you would, um, you can do the masking with that as well. Because obviously you can mask because you have the die. So the dies are really handy to have even when there isn't a stamp that necessarily goes with it. Okay, so that's card number... Uno. And this is the great set that I haven't played with much yet, but I needed to pull it out for this. Okay. And I'm trying out these um, new magnet. Um, I usually use magnet that I bought on Amazon and it was just a thin um, sheet, but this is like a board and the magnet is is awesome it holds it really well so I like that I like to have my stuff where I can see it and 
get some inspiration. Okay, so card number two, um, we're going to make um, a background stamp using dies. So this is kind of used as the main stamp. Now we're going to move on to the background. And for that, we need a whole bunch of plates. <laughs> so Stamparatus. We are using the Seaside Bay Suite. This is another awesome suite. I, I love the ocean. We use four by six holder magnets from the dollar store. Are they strong? Cause this the soft the sticker magnets that I've been using they're nowhere near. Um, here I'll show you. So right now I have my shapes dies on, and I even put it on a cardboard because I thought it might help. But see how it's like your magnets kind of bow, especially if you use them a lot, um, and it doesn't. So every time I put them in and out, they're kind of falling. Yeah, see falling all over the place because it doesn't hold it down. I switched my rectangular dies onto this stronger one. And these ones that usually um, stick up like this are stuck right down. So, so far, so good. Um, it would be very costly for me to switch all of my dies to that. But I thought like my regular use ones, I might try and switch over. But anyways, I had a pack. It's my Christmas gift. <laughs> Christmas gift of organization. All right. So this has, um, this has way more than just this bundle. It has a beautiful six by six paper. And I don't think I can do it justice on camera. It has these like iridescent um shine to one side the shells shine there's gold foiling some more um there's like a line through here it's this beautiful wave um that's a wave there's like a another fan one there's the fish again some background some and then the other side has some some backgrounds and some busy busier it's just all over the place um, so there's that there's a beautiful um, pearl embellishment that goes with if I can find it here these are the flat adhesive backed pearls these are beautiful and you can actually color them to make them look like shiny rocks or shiny pebble, whatever. Um, you can change the color if you have your blends. So that's, um, I think that's everything in that suite. Anyways, <laughs> on to what we're doing. Um, again, so this one has a bunch more that you can cut out. So you can cut out the, what do you call this? Oyster? Cla Which ones have the pearls? Um, you can cut out the bird. You can cut out, this is a seashell on its own, so that would be a good one. Um, you can get the texture, which you will see in my next project. It has the crab. Is that a crab or a lobster? Oh my goodness, I do not know my crustacean. Okay, I think I need to go back to school. Um, anyways, it has a bunch that can be cut out. It also has other ones with textures that can be cut out on their own. It's got some um, grassy, algae, whatever you want to use it for. Um, but so this one, I'm actually going to show you. So obviously you can cut out your stamped images. Um, but... Um, here I'm going to show you how to use it as a background to your stamped image. Um, I also thought, so there's a new alphabet in this new catalog and they're nice small alphabet. This would be a great thing to do um, as a background stamp and then cut this out and then put it on 
top so you know how you have like the bubbled letters kind of look so anyways um lots that you can do with this um where's all my pieces and parts over here okay like i said i don't seem to be very good at finding my pieces and parts okay so i'm gonna take this um blue piece here and then all I'm going to do is I wanted, to, should I put it on? Yeah. Um, I wanted to have some sand on the bottom. So I'm just going to tear this along here and then we'll just stick it down. And then for this top part, I'm just going to use my glue because it's easier to go along the edge. And then, oops, <laughs> sticking to my fingers. And then you just want to line it up with the bottom edge. And I wanted it glued down, and you will see why, because I need it flat there. Um, okay, so then I cut out, if I can find my, oh, they're on the plates. So there's the plate. Okay, so I cut out this um, this guy oyster, I think, um, and then I cut out the this one, the three birds, and so one's on one side, one's on the other, and I'm going to use it on to here as my background. Um, so what you want to make sure you're doing is that you want to make sure you lock your paper in place. You can put a piece of adhesive behind it before you start to stamp. Um, I lined this up according to my last card. But I will do it according to this now. Um, so I'm going to just... Stick a piece here. Get it to where ideally you'd probably want to put your stamp down and then line um, have your paper in the corner or wherever that's too far back. Okay. Now I'm sticking it down. This, I have the foam mat and I have a couple extra pieces of paper under here just because the foam um, of the craft um, foam is smaller than our stamps. And then all I'm taking is the Whisper White Pigment Ink. And I'm going to, hopefully it's still inky. Oh, that front part is, let's see, it's shiny. Now, the other thing with using the craft ink is it does take time to dry. And what I realized is, okay, so this looks nice and white, but if I take my heat gun to speed up the drying time, it actually soaks into the paper as you dry it. I don't know if it would soak in as much if you waited and let it dry, but obviously I do not have the time to do that. So I'm not sure. I would do, like I'd probably dry it even more than that. And then I would do at least one or two more coats to really get a good, but that's why you want it in the Stamparatus and you wanna have your paper in a place where you know um, it's going to get the same spot because you don't want to have it shifting all over the place. And then you're going to do the same thing with these birds here. One bird's going to be in the water and one's going to be on almost on the clam, but that's okay. Anyways, you get the idea of this. I 
Uh, well, I'll just do it. We'll just, ooh. You gotta be careful because this stuff is messy and it's gonna get everywhere. So just be forewarned. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I will do a quick um, dry. I just need a place to put this plate so where it won't make a mess of everything. Okay. So I'm just gonna pick this up, try and dry it a little. Now, I made the mistake of picking it up because my next plate I actually already lined up, but I'll have to realign it. That's okay, because then it shows you what to do. Okay, so then my next plate, I have the actual stamps um, on here. And I think I had them in the exact same spot as the other. But if you don't already have them lined up, we're going to pretend this is dry. It probably is not. I'm going to put this here so I know that I'm for sure lined up or not. And then, so, oh, this is the other way to do this. It's a more foolproof way if I can find pieces and parts. Uh, if you have, oh, here we go. Okay, so keep your foam pieces because if you put your foam here, it gives it um, a bit of a raised edge. And then you can just slide your stamp right in there. And then you can pick it up and you know it's lined up right where you want it. Now you can see, obviously, this white is not dry. You want it to be dry, but um, since we don't have all the time in the world, we're just going to go with it. And you have to know that it does better if you let it dry. <laughs> and you don't, then you won't get white um, in your stamp pad. So once again, if this was dry, um, it would also do better. But again, you want to stamp it, but you probably want to clean it in between. You want to stamp it multiple times and then you'll get that image on top. Same with the birds. Um, they seem still very, very wet. I'm not going to stamp on it. I'll just show you how, oh, for, so again, just like we did with the masking um, of the biker, you can do the same thing here and mask these items. And then what I did was I used, this is retired, this is a no-no. Um, I used the Waves background stamp and I stamped down on top of it with the masking on so it didn't um, go on my oyster and my bird. And I stamped the birds on top of the white. So then you've got like a background stamp on the blue. So this is one you're probably like, well, why wouldn't you just cut it out and stick it on? This give just gives it a different look. It's all flat. I ended up popping up the words. I used, um, I used, and again, I didn't let it dry. So it kind of looks funny, but I used the enamel, the pearlized enamel effects, basic white to make my pearl. And then I stamped on top of it again to kind of get that pearly look. But your other option would be to use the pearl embellishments that I showed you. You could just put a pearl right in there. And then it looks more realistic because these are like not perfectly rounded pearls. So options on what to do. Okay, I'm gonna move these out of the way and let them dry. I shouldn't lose this card because I'm gonna show you it at the end. Okay, so that's that one. Then 
This was the fun one too, because it has like sand, it has the ones with the seashells that you can add. Um, it's a good Okay, last but not least is the wow. Here we're going to kind of combine a bunch of steps. You're probably going to think I'm nutty because there's other ways to, well, you wouldn't get the same look, but close. Um, we're going to use um, an embossing folder and die to create a stamp or to add texture um, for a stamp that doesn't necessarily exist or it might exist, but you can add to it just like this one. So here we have, it's called Sweet Citrus. I love this one and I think I love it because of the texture. So it has, it's one of the hybrid embossing folders. Um, so that means you can cut and emboss. So you're probably thinking to yourself, why the heck do, do we need to make a background stamp when you can cut out the stuff it embosses? You can cut out, but you can only cut out four of the pieces. Not, if you want a whole background, that's not going to work. So the way these um, hybrid folders work is there's like a groove and you can set your die in there. You put your paper, close it, run it through, and then you have an embossed image and cut out of, uh, do I still have, I had a little piece. Oh, I know where it is, I put it in here. So here's one of the pieces that got cut out so I stamped it first. So luckily the stamps are, they are, they come together. So there's the rind, the skin, and there's the, the insides of the citrus. So you could make a lime, lemon, grapefruit like this one, oranges, uh, sky's the limits. <laughs> You haven't looked at the new catalog yet because I didn't send it to you. Um, it, oh yeah, I should have sent it to you. Um, I'm sending them out to my card club people with their club cards. Um, but I do, I have a catalog for you if you want a physical catalog to look at. Um, yeah, tons of really fun stuff in this new catalog. It goes live tomorrow. So you can look at it online tomorrow um, for sure. So you're probably thinking, okay, I can stamp three. I can cut and emboss four things. Why do I want to stamp? Well, if you just run this through, so there's the old way, which I've shown before, where you can um, ink up your folder and put it on but that only gives you limited lines because depending where it's indented and where it's not then you get the reverse and it just um it works but you also get you end up getting ink on the it's not the greatest way to do it it's a different look it works but here we're just adding on to our list of ways of doing new things um, okay, so we have our piece of foam, and I'm going to show you what happens when we run it through. So I, I, I'm not using the, um, die yet. I'm just using the embossing folder. And it's a 3D embossing folder, so I just need... I just need the one plate and then your folder with, usually it's paper, but today it's foam. And I'm gonna put it this way because I don't wanna put too much pressure on the, on the seam here. Well, no, I'm going too far. Okay, well, we're gonna go this way. And then with the 3D, if you have the Stampin' Up! machine, you end up using this gray plate, which is especially made for the 3D folders. 
rolls through very nicely. If you want to roll it through twice, you can, but be forewarned because it's foam, it squishes down um, and it kind of makes a whole new shape. So if you try to run it through again, the image gets a little bit uh, distorted. So once gives you enough of a print that it will stamp what you need. So now what I did from here, you can cut out the four pieces using the die. You, you could, um, like I could have run it through with it, but the way I did, and I think I did do it with the four, but then for the rest of it, all I did was I fussy cut. Yes, I fussy cut because there's no stamps that go with it. But if you want to make a whole background stamp like this, um, you need all the pieces. So now I did not fussy cut the leaves. All I did was the citrus pieces. And this foam is super easy to cut. It's like butter. And with the groove of the citrus, it makes it super easy. And then, but we, what you don't want to do is you don't want to cut through all the pieces. You want to kind of just make a line and cut and then keep your whole piece because when you go to put it onto your Stamparatus plate or um, block, you want to be able to get it back in a way that's similar to how it, and then you want to choose which way, um, I can't remember now if I reversed it, I think, no, I did. So this is the top. So it's actually the backs. Yes, it's the back side. Because then when you stamp it, it's this way. So then when you run it through, <laughs> it's so so complicated. When you want it, when you run it through, you want it to run through um, so that you have your embossed image up. You could, I did do it once where I hadn't reversed it. And so it was the reverse embossing, which is fine too. Um, just whatever you're looking to do. So here I've used this. I've rolled it through many times. You can see that it's still got a bit of give to it. Um, it's discolored. I just wipe it with a baby wipe to try and get the color off. Um, but I'll show you how easy it is to stamp and you can see the plate I don't know if you can see it or not there's like yellow all over my plate because it does get messy and so once I take it off I'll just it's all wipeable it, nothing is permanent um, and then once again since it's not you can see I just have adhesive on the back of everything okay so I want it kind of generally centered here. I think I'll just line it up to this line. And once again, I'm going to just put a wee bit of adhesive, keep it in place. And then I'm gonna take my um, Daffodil Delight, I think, yes. I can hand deliver it. Yes, I can hand deliver it. Need to have a, or you can come have a play date here and check it all out in person. Um, however, I do, when we got back, Mike and Owen were sick and now Andrew ended up getting the flu. So probably don't be want to be around here. Um, okay, so the bonus with the Stamparatus is if I did, since it's already colored, it's hard to see how much ink I actually got on here. But the nice thing is, is if I pick it up and it hasn't inked up as much as I would like it, I can come back and you know what, I need a, it gives it, there's less give. And then make sure it's in that same spot. 
do that again. Depending on how um, how picky you are, that's pretty darn good. Oops. Maybe I need to re-ink my, my daffodil. I spent the day the other day re-inking a lot of pieces, but I don't think I did that one. Okay, good enough. So now you've got a background of similar, but it doesn't have the leaves. So you probably want to get, you know, it kind of looks bare. So, let me close this so I don't stick my hand in it. Now, this is where you're going to take your embossing folder and we're going to make sure we've got it in the right place and I'm going to tell you right now this one isn't exact because I fiddled with the foam many times and I re emboss things so it's not lined up to a T but it's close enough so you can see it's pretty close I'm going to run it through my machine again. So now this obviously isn't a quick card. It's not something that you would want to mass produce, but a special card for a special someone or just playing, coming up with new, like Yolanda, this would, oh, I don't, this must have been in the machine, rolled up somewhere. Um, this would actually probably be cool. Or you probably just use, um, do you just stick this on your jelly plate directly? Or would it help to have a, um, to use the, the, I don't know if this is impression enough on your jelly plate, but you could use the paper because you can see it's much more um, indented. <laughs> I really have a lack of technical words today. I need to make up my own craft vocabulary and we're just going to go with that. So you can see now you've got the stamped, like otherwise these lemons would just be white, right? Or lemons, oranges, whatever. If you wanted to do, if you wanted the centers to have more color you could um before you stand oh where's my where's my plate anyways pretend this is on my plate i really don't know where i put the plate just now um you could do the yellow stamp it and then you could take a blending brush and did you know we have little mini blending brushes now. So here's the standard size brush and here's the mini one. So if you want it, you could do it after the fact and come in with some flirty flamingo for your grapefruit if that's what you were making. Or after you had stamped the yellow, you could come in and just kind of dab on some, um, some pink and then stamp it again to get the pink before you run it through the embossing machine obviously but I'm just gonna leave mine as yellow for now and I will show you oh here we go I did have so here's the cutout of so then you would just lay that on your stamparatus plate and then put all the pieces back in so that you know um, how to line them up just like we did the other ones so this is the card I ended up cutting my background piece in half because I thought it was really busy like it didn't show up as much here obviously so I used the cutout and I did I used the stamp stamps for those four pieces that we have the cutout for and then we use the dies to get the rest of the background and just cut out a circle. The leaves are part of the 
um, set as well. There's the leaves and there's um, dies that coordinate. There's two. That's the nice thing. So you can stamp um, flowers and both sets of flowers. There's two. And then both the leaves, there's two. So you can stamp multiples and run them through and get them going fast. It looks like Swiss cheese. <laughs> oh, geez. Yes. Oh, yeah. I for yeah, you can just use the embossed um, paper. That's right. You don't need stamped paper because you're using it on your plate. Actually, maybe that's what I should do. Maybe I'll have to do a... A jelly plate using dyes. Um, maybe you could be my guest star. You can be the the expert jelly plater and using your dyes part three. Um, yeah, so this is just using all of the pieces and parts, the stamps, the embossing folder, and the dyes. Um, and this paper I have to show. So I believe it is um, so Along with, um, not only do we have the new catalog coming out tomorrow, it is celebration. And I believe, let me just check. So here's celebrate. Yeah, it is. Um, there's a package of paper that you can get. It's part of celebration. It's huge. It's one of those really big, I had to put it in two um, holders because it was so big, but it kind of worked based on the colors super fun colors and l really fun prints. So we've got stars, we've got flowers, we've got zigzags, we've got hexagons, we've got polka dots. Um, I don't know what you call those. <laughs> some more squares and some more flowers and some plaid more stars and more plaid and diagonal stripes and more squares and then there's the other colors there's a grid um, there's some stripes and some more squares polka dots like more hexagons and plaids but like I love these colors it's just so springy and fun it's so nice to have this bright stuff in the winter time. So yeah, don't miss out. I don't know if it's a, I'm wondering if it's a host. I don't think so. I think it's something you can earn. One sec. Yeah. So it, with a $120 purchase, you can earn all that paper for free. It's one of the bigger packs, but yeah, so I just cut it in half, put half and half, and then put my stuff on top. And there we had it. So hopefully that has inspired you um, to pull out your dies and come up with some new ways of using them in this new year. We'll have some new fun, but yeah, isn't this fun? Like, I love these new sets. Gone is Christmas. I still have to send out my Christmas cards. I have them all in behind me. They're still all up. Um, yeah, going away right before Christmas and twice and then gone for Christmas and then back when people are sick and whatever. Things don't get done. Um, so yeah, so all of this, the For You, oh, the For You is also from one of the new sets. It's called Love For You, and it's um, got a whole bunch of words. It's so much love and for you, and it has the three, like you can stamp on it. You can, so again, there's lots. They, you don't even have to cut out the foam for these ones because they're stamps that actually go with, and there's some flowers and stuff too. So that's where that came from. If you're wondering, this one came from this set, and this one came from this set. So Hopefully you enjoyed that. Yeah, let's let's do a, we'll have to look at our calendars and we'll do, have you on as a guest star and you can do a jelly plating episode using our dyes. That would be fun. Okay, let's, um, we'll chat off, off, uh, 
Oh my God, off camera. <laughs> um, yeah, have a great rest of your week. Um, I will try and get this posted right away. I have a feeling, I think I forgot to post my last one before Christmas onto YouTube. So I'm gonna make sure I'm caught up with everything. We'll get that all on there. I will post the pictures of these cards. And yeah, don't forget if you have some last chance item you want, um, you can go look. And if, uh, if you love these ones, check out the new catalog starting tomorrow. All right, take care. Oh, Linda, I didn't even know you were on there, but <laughs> thanks for watching. Thanks everyone for watching. All right, take care. Bye.